does the GR Corolla handle snow? How do the 24 and 25 model years compare? And now that the GR Corolla offers an automatic transmission, how does the automatic fare against the manual? Hello everyone and welcome. That will be the focus of this video. And since we're talking about snow driving, I thought I'd take my Corolla out to some nice snowy roads. So here we are just like I planned. Actually, I put a lot of effort into trying to get this video filmed in the snow and the weather will not cooperate. Regardless, I've spent plenty of time driving in the snow in this machine, so there's plenty to talk about. So when it comes to driving in the snow, there are three things that are really important. In order, starting with the most important is tires. Matters more than anything else. Doesn't matter what vehicle you're in, if you're on terrible tires, you're not gonna have a good time in the snow. So tires are the most important. I am currently on Continental Viking Contact 7s. They are exceptional in winter driving, love driving on these in the snow or ice. They're a great tire. Now, this video isn't sponsored. In fact, I purchased these tires last year. However, for 2025, Continental is the official tire of Engineering Explained, so we are going to be doing some cool videos together later this year. Okay, so first thing you need, good winter tires, check. Second thing is the drivetrain. So, of course, all-wheel drive being better than front-wheel drive, being better than rear-wheel drive, typically. Unless you have a really heavy rear weight bias, then rear wheel drive tends to be the worst out of those three options. And then of course the all wheel drive system itself does matter, right? They're not all created equal. This one in the GR Corolla is very good. Part of why it's really good is that you're always sending torque to both axles. It's not reacting to what it feels. There is always at minimum at least 40% of the torque sent to that rear axle and you can send as much as 70% to that rear axle. So you always have torque going to both axles. Great. On top of that, you then have to split that torque between the right and left wheels. Well, in both the front and the rear axles, we have Torsen limited slip differentials. So if one side has more grip, it gets more torque when it needs it. So exceptional all-wheel drive system here. You've pretty much always got a place to put power down. Really great for sliding around, having a good time in the snow. This thing is awesome to drive in slippery conditions. Okay, now after tires and after drivetrain, number three is ground clearance. And here's where we're a bit limited. Now for a sports car, this is at 5.3 inches. That's pretty decent. However, for driving in deep snow, you know, there are gonna be times where maybe that's not enough, especially if perhaps the road has deep ruts. You know, if you're going off-road, if there's deep ruts, that kind of thing that you have to travel through, well, this is limited in ground clearance. Now, most driving conditions on roads in snow, you're gonna be absolutely fine. However, it is just worth saying, hey, this doesn't have a ton of ground clearance. There are scenarios where I take my Maverick because, hey, the snow's really deep. Even though the Maverick has a worse all-wheel drive system, ground clearance is one of those things where, you know, if you don't need it, it doesn't really matter at all. If you do need it, it matters a whole bunch. Now, before we move on to the 24 versus 25 model year differences, I want to talk a little bit about torque split because there's some interesting math that you can do as it relates to the torque split this vehicle offers. So you can have either 60-40, 50-50, or 30-70 split front rear with this vehicle. Now, why does torque split matter? Well, from an acceleration standpoint, you want to send the torque where there's weight on the vehicle, right? So for example, let's say this vehicle was doing a wheelie. Well, you have no traction on the front end, right? If the front end's up in the air. So there's no point in sending torque to that front axle. So you'd want to send 100% of that torque to the rear axle. Now, not possible in this vehicle. It's gonna have a 30-70 split at most to send to the rear axle. However, it's important to realize that where you have the weight, is where you want to put that torque. So this vehicle has about a 60-40 weight distribution. So from a launch, ideally, initially, the first amount of torque you're going to apply is going to be a 60-40 split. However, the second you start accelerating, then you shift that weight towards the back. So you can look at what is the maximum this vehicle can accelerate at. You can look at its dimensions. You can look at where's its center of gravity, that sort of thing and you can determine how much of the weight is gonna be on the rear axle under acceleration. Now, pretty much the only gear that's gonna allow you to reach about one G in acceleration, mathematically, theoretically possible, if you have no losses in the drivetrain in first gear only, well, that means in that first gear, if you were to launch at peak torque, 
you would have about a 40-60 weight distribution. So ideally, you'd want most of the power going towards the rear to get that initial launch really well once you've started moving. Now, realistically, most gears cannot provide enough torque to overwhelm either axle. So if you're in, let's say, second gear, third gear, maybe the maximum torque you're actually going to be able to accelerate this with is going to accelerate you at about half a G. In that scenario, about a 50-50 torque split is ideal. And of course, you can put this thing in track mode and then boom there you have it you've got that perfect 50 50 torque distribution all right but as it relates to torque split something interesting happens when you're driving on a snowy or icy surface because now you have more torque available than you have grip that you can put it down so let's say the icy surface that you're driving on has a frictional coefficient of just 0.1 well the maximum acceleration you're going to get is about 0.1 g and so the ideal torque split is pretty much just your vehicle's weight distribution so about 60 40. okay but now this brings us into a handling discussion so so during winter driving school, driving these GR Corollas, one of the things they try to grind into your head is that, hey, you want oversteer, you don't want understeer. Because understeer, when you lose the front axle and you just push straight ahead, you don't have any control. Oversteer, as you start to slide, you can actually control the weight distribution and get the vehicle to do what you want it to do. So oversteer is okay, understeer you don't want. And so if you choose these traction modes where you have a 50-50 torque split or a 30-70 torque split and you're sending more power to that rear axle, even though you're not gonna get better acceleration, you're gonna change the handling behavior of the vehicle so that it is now more prone to oversteering and it wants to slide and that can help you drive faster now of course you still need to know what you're doing so that you don't end up in a snowbank jason what did you do <laughs> i uh i was nervous about the spacing i voiced my concerns and then i i did exactly what i put into the world yeah unfortunately so here we are stuck but you know we're talking about what's ideal so from an acceleration standpoint it's kind of impossible to think of a scenario where 30 70 torque split makes sense maybe a really steep uphill uh, then perhaps you've got a lot of weight on the rear axle and so maybe in that scenario 30 70 makes sense from an acceleration standpoint but realistically what you're doing is you're changing the handling behavior of the vehicle by putting it in that 50 50 or 30 70 and that's a really cool thing to be able to control as a driver and say, hey, I want a little bit more oversteer. You can change the balance of the car by using these settings. So in scenarios where you have a lot of grip and you're in a high gear, that means you're not gonna be able to overwhelm those tires regardless of your torque split. Or in a scenario where you have basically no grip, you're driving on ice, and no matter what torque split you're in, you're going to overwhelm all four tires. Well, in those scenarios, changing that torque split is simply a handling change that you're making rather than acceleration change. All right, so moving on to the 24, versus 25 model year after having driven both. So one of the disappointing things, just as we were mentioning that 3070 torque split, you can no longer select that as a set target for the torque split in the 25 model year. The new track mode varies it between 6040 and 3070, but you as a driver do not have the control over that. So in the maximum rear bias, you can set it to target at just individually is the 50-50 in the new gravel mode versus that is now track mode in the 24, which is the 50-50. So they changed everything around to make it confusing between the two. A bummer that you can't target that higher torque split for that more, you know, oversteery natured driving behavior with the 3070 torque split. That said, you do get more torque. So you get 295 pound feet instead of 273, another 22 pound feet of torque. So that is a nice welcome change to see. Same amount of power, but a better torque curve overall in the new model year. You also get a new front end and an optional additional cooler up front. So actually, you know, when I first saw it, I didn't like the new front end. After seeing it in person, now I do actually really like it. I think it's a nice change. I think it looks really good. I'm happy still with what I have because I love this blue, but I do think the new cars look cool. And after seeing them in person, I do actually like the new bumper. They also have significantly revised the suspension. So there is a significant update for that suspension, different things that they've got going on with that. But personally, having driven both, I don't necessarily see, hey, if you're choosing between one or the other, there's any huge reason why you need to pick a 24 versus a 25. They both felt fantastic to drive. Both of them are exceptional driver's cars. And for the 25, they are now offering an automatic transmission. So let's talk about the manual versus the automatic. All right, manual transmission versus automatic. Of course, my personal preference is the manual transmission. It's more engaging. It's a lighter vehicle. It's more fun in my opinion. 
However, that said, after driving the automatic that Toyota offers for the GR Corolla, I was impressed. There are three reasons why I liked it. First of all, it's not that big of a weight penalty. So if you look at vehicles like the Subaru WRX and you go from the manual transmission to the CVT, it's about 140 pound weight penalty. That's really significant. If you look at the Golf R, you know, not that bad actually going from the manual to the DSG, about a 75 pound weight penalty. For the GR Corolla, it's only a 45 weight penalty to go from the manual to the automatic. So cool to see that they're gonna be pretty close in performance. Second reason I like it, aggressive gearing. So it's now an eight speed rather than the manual is a six speed and gears one through six in the automatic are all more aggressive than gears one through six in the manual. So that means aggressive acceleration. I love to see that, that they didn't have really tall gearing. And then of course, gears seven and eight, they are taller than six in this. So you drop that down for highway cruising, drop down your RPM, love the strategy with the gearing on the automatic transmission. And third, it wasn't annoying to drive. And I mean that as a compliment. It was, it was fine, it was fine. That's good when it comes to automatics. Fine is good when it comes to an automatic transmission. And it was fine to drive. It didn't seem in the way, it didn't seem annoying. It was fine. And just as a comparison of why I say, okay, fine is good. Like if you look at the previous generation WRX with the 2.0 liter, not the current WRX, current WRX CVT is actually awesome. Previous generation 2.0 liter, WRX with the CVT, it just ruined the driving experience. Everything about the vehicle was worse and it was more expensive. And it's like, why would you want this? It makes everything worse. So here it's not that big of a penalty in the Corolla switching from the manual to the automatic. You get a little bit more aggressive gearing. It's a little bit heavier, yeah. So acceleration's pretty much the same, but it's not a big penalty. So overall, thumbs up on the automatic transmission. Still prefer the manual. Now, that's not to say the automatic doesn't have its downsides because yes, it's heavier, but also it gets worse fuel economy than the manual. What? What? And in addition to that, it is a $2,000 option. So it's more expensive, heavier, and you get worse fuel economy. So again, go with the manual or don't, it's fine. So I thought I would wrap this up by talking about my ownership of this 24 and what it's been like so far. I've got about 1500 miles on the car. I've had it for a little under a year and I love it. I love this thing. And I've been trying to figure out, you know, what is what are the things about it that really make me happy? And one of the things that I love about this machine is that the throttle control is exceptional. It's exceptional. So those little things that you don't really pay attention to, but you know when they're good, the throttle control is one of them here where it just makes you feel so connected in that you can put your foot at whatever amount of throttle you want and you can look at the boost gauge and it'll just hold it right there. It's very precise in its throttle control and that's rare for turbo engines, especially tiny turbo engines. So the throttle control is just really good and you get exactly what you ask for and as a result, you do feel very connected to the machine. And yeah, I mean, it's just fun to drive. It makes cool sounds as you're letting off there. Coming into this corner here, IMT rev matches for you. If you don't want to do it yourself, get back on the throttle. Ooh, yeah, it's fun. Now, there are some things that I don't like about it. They're all pretty minor, but there are some things that I don't like. First of all, cruise control is always about one mile per hour off. So for example, if you set your cruise control to 70 miles per hour, you're gonna be driving most of the time at 69. Nice. Second thing, the heated portion of the steering wheel does not fully cover the steering wheel. So the top of it is not heated. That's a bummer. I love heated steering wheels. I think they're awesome. I wish they also had covered the top of the steering wheel. Third thing, they have an awesome menu system here where you can choose what you want to look at. And I love that. However, tire pressure seems like something you might want to monitor and you can set it within the menu. But when you turn the car off and then turn it back on, suddenly it changes that tire menu to a trip computer. And it's like, what, why did you change that? Every single time you turn the vehicle on and off, it eliminates that tire pressure from being an option within the menu, silly. And fourth, it has a wireless charger for your phone, but it is absolutely worthless. It will not charge your phone. You can put it in the perfect position you can hold it there and see that it starts charging and then 15 seconds later it stops the wireless charger never works it's useless but honestly my complaints are very minor i have absolutely loved this machine whether you're driving on the snow driving on road i've had so much fun with this thing it's an exceptional driver's car really do love it if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below thanks for watching